If you look closely at every single major character that interacts with Jon Snow, it's safe to assume that everybody hates him. Yeah, they do hate him. And it kind of makes you wonder, does George R.R. R. Martin hate him? And, you know, in preparation for this video, too, I looked at some forums, like Song of Ice and Fire forum posts and stuff. And in, you know, in the meta and the real world, I guess they kind of think of him as a Gary Stu, right? Or a Mary Sue. Like, he doesn't really have any personal flaws yeah, or yeah, whatever, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But that obviously is not the reason why people hate him in the show. And they do. This extends from his enemies to his friends, to his family. And it's mostly like earlier on, we're kind of focusing on this in, in the Song of Ice and Fire series, so like a Game of Thrones and Clash of Kings. But there's one character I think we can safely you know say loves him. And uh, at the end of this video, I want to give you, uh, Gator, and maybe the people listening maybe. that far in, my thousand, 1,000 million IQ move Ned Stark could have done uh, that would have been able to solve this whole issue, kept Jon Snow safe, and also made him have a good life. Because I think if you look at this, Everyone's claim to why Ned Stark treats Jon Snow the way he does is to keep Jon safe from Rob's wrath and Ro Robert Baratheon, excuse me, not like Robert Stark or Rob Stark, Robert Baratheon, because you know you see how Robert is allowing people to treat Targaryens like when you saw the sack of King's Landing, Tywin's boy, the Mountain goes in there and oh, uh, you know makes a mess of those. No, let's Martell say his Targaryen. favorite. Let's just say his favorite fruit is grape. Yeah. I mean, to say yeah. the least. Yeah, he made a, a, a mess. Of, he, he put the red <laughs> yeah, and red did. keep on that one. If you thought the Martells were dirty before, or Dorn, right? <laughs> if you thought Dorn was dirty before. So, like, I can understand Ned's hesitation and his fear. If you look at how long it took people to realize Joffrey is not Rob's, excuse me, Robert's kid, then why did Ned have any sort of fear that people were going to figure out John was Lyanna's and Rhaegar's kid? If you saw the black hair and they don't have, like, purple eyes, I think you're in the clear with John, right? Oh, dude, even if he had blonde hair, silver hair, and no purple eyes, I think he's completely safe. Like, I I don't know. Like, if Ned went and he just kind of brings this bastard home, right? Like, Robert's with him a lot of the time. And the fact that Ned didn't bring up to Robert at any point that he impregnated somebody or whatever, I almost feel like he should have been suspicious that this kid wasn't legit anyway with the black hair and the black eyes. And since he didn't, I, I think, like you say, I think that he could have had a certain combination of Targaryen traits, and Robert's just too stupid, apparently, to question it. You know what I'm saying? Like, he didn't question it all to begin with, which I think he probably should have. And since he didn't, I think this kid could have had blonde hair, and it would have been fine. The purple eyes are well, probably give away, but... Well, no, because the, in the books, at least, Ashara Dane was, like, the rumored love interest for Ned Stark, and uh, after he brings, you know, Dawn, the sword, back to Starfall, the home of uh, 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 House Dane... Uh, Arthur Dane. Uh, Ashara Dane... Like, jumps off, she doesn't jump off a cliff. She jumps out a window, basically just, you know, uh, self deletes yeah, herself. Yeah, just for fun. Yeah, just for fun. And, and no one knows why. It's still like a mystery why that occurred. But that is definitely, well, of course, maybe it's a little bit like, hey, I just killed your brother, but I don't know why. Like, oh, the person I kind of liked, uh, maybe loved, killed my brother. The only way out is <laughs> through death. I don't know. It doesn't make full sense. Like, what her so reasoning is. Let's, yeah, let's not ask any questions. It's well, ridiculous. She lives in Dorne, so, of course, uh, we're not a big fan of Dorne here on this channel, but. Uh, she has purple eyes, and if it was rumored that this bastard's son was Ned's and Ashar Dane's, then that would justify black hair, purple eyes. So, I mean, there is a way in the books that makes sense, uh, but in the show, Ned is some, like, I forgot what the, the lover's name is in it, um, that he mentions to Robert on the camera. What is it? Heading down to he, King's he, Landing. he throws it off, like, some whatever. And it, Maybe it's something with a W, but it, I remember Bessie. That's the only I thing know, I remember. Bessie. Yeah, no, I Bessie. know, I know, right? Like, he, Robert and him, they're, they're laughing and bullshitting, right? They're Dude, they're having a great time with the boys, right? Sit at that little tiny tea table or whatever, and they're laughing like crazy. Right. And as soon as Robert brings up, hey, what was the name of that girl again that you impregnated? Suddenly Ned, Ned's voice and his whole demeanor shifts, and he's clearly trying to rack his brain, thinking of, oh, fuck, what was the lie I told my friend 30 years ago <laughs> or 20 years ago, you know? How is Robert not susp I don't know, man. I think the whole thing is kind of ridiculous. Yeah, you see, like, uh, Ned, like, looking at the table for words he can possibly, <laughs> like, uh, wine ham... Berg lady? <laughs> Tablecloth, grass, tree, <laughs> best friend. <laughs> Robert, of course, just takes it in stride and just starts thinking about the big breasted Bessie. Thank the gods for Bessie. So I don't understand why Ned does this the way he does, though, right? He says, I'm going to keep him safe by calling him my bastard, keeping him up in the, you know, in Winterfell, in the north. But, like, why doesn't he do things in his power to make it a better life for him, knowing that Cat hates him? So I'm trying to, like, justify why Ned doesn't hate him, because in my brain right now as I'm thinking about it, 
looking at the decisions Ned makes, he doesn't like John because he could have had a better life for John, or at least told him the Night's Watch isn't as nice as it looks, or at least it seems uh, when you go up there. He, no one gives him a heads up. And in, is it episode three of Game of Thrones? You know, there's this conversation between John and Tyrion where he goes, "No one told, no one told me it was going to be this bad." And it's like Tyrion's a like, guy. Yeah, I don't know why. And the Lannisters are the only honest ones. They, they are. They're the only ones that show any care for John. But dude, how is this not on John a little bit too? It's like he couldn't have asked. That's the thing. If you see. Let's say, even in that first episode, right, we see that deserter get beheaded by uh, Ned Stark. And we see, right. I, I'm, or I'm sure John has seen many people be sent to the wall, whether it be just, you know, passing Winterfell or people from Winterfell, because he's the son of the Lord of Winterfell. I'm sure he's seen people get condemned to the wall all the time. If, he's, if this is the kind, if he's the kind of dudes that are like the locale at the wall, if these are the kind of dudes, and they're choosing this, like, barely over the death sentence, right? It's like, ah, I don't, I'm not sure I want to go to the wall or die. I guess I'll take the wall. If you really think that's the place that you want to go, I don't know. I think the little bit of the onus is on John too. But yeah, dude, if John's walking around through his whole childhood being like, dude, I can't wait to go to the wall. This is going to be fucking great. It's going to be a party. I'm going to love my life there. It's going to be easy as hell. I can show off my swordsmanship. They're all going to love me. If Ned really cared about his son or likes him at all, which he clearly does not, he would have set him straight just observing the reality of the situation there. And the same is true for Catelyn. I understand that Ned's an honorable guy and he wants to keep his uh, word to his sister, right? At least at first. But if he takes this baby back to Winterfell and Catelyn is abusing the shit out of it, you know, like dipping its head in the toilet or whatever and dropping out its head on purpose, just hoping it'll go away, stuff like that. <laughs> I don't understand how Ned doesn't decide to say, you know, Catelyn, listen, keep this to yourself, but it's not actually my bastard. This is Lyanna and Rhaegar's kid. It would disrupt the whole Seven Kingdoms. Like, how do you not just it, say that? I, I don't know how he doesn't trust her after how many years of marriage. How bad does Kat have to be of a mother or at least, like, hatred towards bastards for you to think that she can't even keep that one secret, right? There, how many secrets do they have between them that, uh, you know, potentially, like, the levels of secrecy of, you know, classifications within Ned's head, like, top secret. Catelyn's never been in there. Like, it's even, like, deeper than top secret. Um, but something you said earlier where Jon Snow would have an idea, basically, of people being sent to the wall because it wouldn't be like, oh, whoever of uh, House Card Stark, he was the biggest and tallest, greatest guy. They're sending him to the wall because he's the best. Good for him. Like, the Kingsguard, right? They're the best. They're best of the best. They're going to guard the king. You know the best are being sent there. You see they're not sending their best up to the wall, right? They're not sending their best, and Jon Snow would have to understand that. Ned needs to sell the wall better to Jon, but, but not lie to him, right? He could have said something like, hey, the wall is an honorable post, but recently there's been a lot of stinker binguses going up there, little naughty boys. If you go up there, you're going to clean things up. And I know it's not going to be easy, but it's, it's going to be hard. You can do this. You can bring honor to our name as a Stark by going up there. Instead of just saying like, it's an honor and not telling them how sucky it's going to be, right? It's a life appointment. It's not like a four year enlistment, like the military where people are like, yeah, it's going to be hard. But then like after four years, if you don't like it, you can just leave. It's a lifelong commitment. I a hundred percent agree. I don't understand why he's so apprehensive to tell his son this. It's kind of like, I mean, in the show, you kind of get this vibe. It, it's different in the books. I think Ned is a little bit more personable in the books compared to the show where he's very, very stoic and not very uh, emotive with his face or whatever. And I, it's a good for the character. I like it, but it's almost like he has too much on his mind all the time. At least that's the way his body language is, right? Like, he never can find the right words. It, it, it lends to that great moment. And it's one of the best moments in the series when he tells John, like, next time I see you, we'll talk about your mother. You know, like, that's a really, really oh, good yeah. scene. But when you kind of compile it with all this other stuff, it just kind of seems like maybe Ned forgot to tell him about everything. Or maybe he's just being a dick and he knows that he's never going to see John again. Or, he's, you know... Like, like, maybe he doesn't know it, but it, he doesn't know he's going to die, necessarily. But it's like, if he hears John's, like, he's on a little vacation coming back to Winterfell, you know, hang out with, with the family around the campfire kind of thing. Maybe Catelyn's out, right? So he's safe. He's, he's good for a while. Ned's like, oh, shit, you know, I got to go real quick. And he dodges every time John comes back just to avoid the confrontation. It almost seems like that's the kind of route he would take because of the great lengths it seems like he went to just to keep information from this guy. And Benjen, by the way, is no better. This guy comes from the wall. He actually is there all the time. He's gone on yeah. many ranger missions. He's had his life in danger. He knows about the cold. He's watched people die all around him. And he's Ned's brother. You'd think that he would see his nephew and be like, even if he sees Ned neglecting his kid, which I'm sure he does, shouldn't he then take it upon himself to kind of give him a warning? Like, Psst, hey, 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 
Like, it's not as crazy as you think. It's not as crazy as you think. There's a couple posts within, you know, Game of Thrones or the uh, Westeros, I should say, that you have to basically give up all your rights as a lord or bastard, whatever. And, and, and Ned's in this theory, because it's still not confirmed in the books, that uh, John is Lyanna and Rhaegar's son. Even if he is their son, whether he's legitimized through, like, some sort of uh, Faith of the Seven ceremony or whatever. If John or if Ned wants to keep John safe, there's all there's a couple posts he could take that would you know forsake his um forsake his claims as either you know uh, the heir to the Iron Throne as if if John was you know the rightful heir underneath Rhaegar and Lyanna right he could either be a maester he could be part of the King's Guard but for some reason they're like yeah the Watch the Night's Watch that that's where you should go the that, worst that's option where Starks have always gone dude I would be a maester a million times over other than a, a member of the Night's Watch, or just send them overseas and say, hey, dude, you can be, uh, you know, join the Second Sons or the Gold Company over there. You can have some fun. Yeah, right. Be a hired know? hand. Be a mercenary. It's like, how <laughs> funny would that be, though? It's like, yeah, you know what? I don't like, I think you should be a maester, John, for the Night's Watch. <laughs> he <laughs> sends up there anyway. Dude, that would suck ass, man. Oh, I know. And so I'm, I'm trying to think of why Benjen canonically would allow or at least not say anything to John about how bad the Night's Watch is unless he just kind of thinks to himself you know the Night's Watch is a pretty bad place but we need some good guys up there you know like I, I need him up there but even when he goes up there you know Benjen does the what was the first thing he does He's like yeah, I think I'm gonna go start ranging yeah see you later I'm man I'm gonna go on a range real quick yep. <laughs> I, I'm out I gotta go. I'm out peace so and he yeah he um, literally dies to get away from John that's how much he doesn't want to be around this guy okay but honestly realistically though so back at Winterfell we we actually see Benjen visit Winterfell and Ned's there and they're all there. Do you think over the course of John's life, Benjen and Ned have had a serious conversation about John joining the Night's nice Watch, or do you think it's just somehow never come up? It's had to have come up because uh, at a certain point, I think John was just like, and maybe this is the other thing too, is like Catelyn drove John to that point where he wants to leave because I don't think Ned at any point. Well, I don't know if it. What's in, what's in, comment down below? Let us know what uh, if there was a conversation Ned had with John. Or Benjamin had with John that was like pushing on him, or if John organically picked it up himself that I should join the Night's Watch, right? Like who pushed this on him, or is it just organically you know, observed through? <laughs> who planted the seeds? Like oh, yeah, it's because dude dealing with Cat the way she does, Catelyn Stark, I would want to join the Night's Watch. You know, or take me well, anywhere I mean, other choose, than here. I choose something different, but yeah, I, I guess I okay. choose the Night's Watch over living with it, right? I mean, it's, I'd still yes. choose something different, but. Uh, maybe as a bastard, he just feels like he doesn't have the choice or whatever. But from Ned's point of view, too, I guess that kind of does make sense. It's like, dude, Catelyn is bitch supreme. And Ned is not an oath breaker. So it makes sense he wouldn't, like, set his wife aside just for the needs of a bastard, even if he feels like it's wrong. So maybe, you know, while Catelyn is, like, singing beautiful little nursery rhymes to Rob in the crib, <laughs> she's whispering out the other side of her mouth at little tiny infant subliminal messaging to get... John to join the Night's Watch and maybe Ned sees that and he's just like well you know if it makes my wife a little bit happier I guess I can deal with that even though I think that's bitch behavior from Ned I could see it happening because he's not an oath breaker that's true a lot of bitch behavior that we don't see by Ned not standing up for his it's either his like it's either his bastard son or Lyanna's kid right that's the other the two options there are Correct. I don't think yeah. it's like some other person's kid that he's uh, taking care of other than Lyanna's either way why would you let your wife treat him like that? It's like, dude, tell her to shut the fuck up. Be like, that, that's my blood. How about, you, how about you shut the fuck up? Or otherwise, you're going to kiss ice right here on your neck. <laughs> ice the sword? Yes, of course. Ice the sword. Not oh, dude. <laughs> fucking so cool. You know, speak. speak well, I don't know. I mean, they live in Winterfell, right? Dude, speaking <laughs> of. He's just man, a block of house, ice and just throws it at her. I wish, man, that they made the sword of House Dane, man, a great sword like ice. It would oh, so much cool. I don't know why I they know. chose to make that change, dude. Like, in the, in the show, right? When. Arthur Dane is fighting, you don't even make note of his sword because it's so pathetic. They, like, linger on the shot of it that, like, the pommel has a star on it because, you know, the bleeding star of the prophecy, whatever. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, um, or it's also supposedly forged from a fallen star. Right, yeah, fallen star. And, well, I guess the bleeding star might have been, who's his name, Sir Arthur Dane himself, but still, like, the whole thing there. I actually just, I just rewatched that fight recently, even though, you know, shame on me for watching it from season six through eight, right? But right. I rewatched that, uh, I rewatched that scene and he kind of sticks his sword in the ground. I think I think that's the sword he sticks in the ground, right? Yeah. Like uh, when when him and Ned are approaching each other, like kind of like you shall not pass sort of thing. And he sticks it in the ground, and it just kind of wobbles back and forth. It looks yeah. so fl- it's like made of aluminum or something like that. It's like I could forge this out of old beer cans if I wanted to. 
That's how embarrassing it is, dude. They could have made it look a lot cooler, and I'm glad, at least in House of the Dragon, they have, you know, Blackfire and Dark Sister look really cool compared to uh, some of these other ones. Oh, yeah, but, amazing. Okay, but also Rob Stark, right? He knows John's leaving. There's no way he wants to keep him there. You know, like, if I'm a brother of some person that's about to leave and, like, go for life, I would try to do a little persuasion going on. Like, hey, dude, I'm going to be the Lord of Winterfell. Don't worry. I know mom's a bitch, but listen. I got you, bro. Just come come stay here, and I'll take care of her as soon as dad goes or whatever, but you don't have to go. Clearly, Rob's not that big a fan of John, even though in the books he names John as heir, I think, right before he uh, dies at the Red Wedding. He leaves like a, he has like a will written out that Catelyn's not a big fan of, but why doesn't John fight more for... Why, excuse me, why doesn't Rob fight more for John? Yeah, see, that, that whole Will situation, that doesn't tell me that he likes John. That just kind of tells me he hates Catelyn more than he hates John, which is not surprising because Catelyn is literally the fucking worst, and she <sighs> makes the second worst decisions in that whole war, second only to Rob himself. And Rob, by the way, too, as we discussed in a previous video, he's a fucking simp. He's a simp, True. and I think he cares about appearances. And so even though he should be bros with Jon Snow, and I know they grew up together and stuff too, that whole time where Jon is just having innocent fun, just loving his life, like, my brother loves me so much and I love him back. That whole time, I guarantee Rob's just out of the side of his eye. I mean, like, <laughs> oh, that's my competition right there because he is in great shape. He's slim. He has that boyish look that for some reason girls like over big masculine, like, jack dudes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's got, like, mm -hmm. that internet in-shape persona going on or whatever. Or not internet, but you know what I'm talking about, right? For some reason, like Timothy Chalamet kind of kind of dude. Oh, yeah. For some mm -hmm. reason, women like that vibe compared to like a big Chad dude, which I'll never understand. But Well, you're not a woman. Uh, well, eh, <laughs> maybe. We'll see. Not yet. <laughs> but that's that's what John is compared to Rob, at least in the book. Rob is like a big Chad dude, and John is a more slim, like pretty boy. So I think he sees John as competition, and I think the wall is a great way to just get him out of the limelight, dude. Make him swear to never have any children, never have a wife. Like, that is the best option he could have possibly had. And yeah, sure, at the end of Rob's life, when he thinks, man, what do I want to do with my last act? Uh, I hate my mother so much that I think if I die, I want my bastard brother that she hates so much to take over the place where my mother lived her entire adult life. I think that would be a logical decision there. He definitely doesn't like Jon Snow. No, he's not a big fan of Jon Snow, and I think Catelyn also looks at Jon as a competition too because Jon has like all the Stark features and Rob has like all the Tully features. So who looks like they should be heir to Winterfell? It looks Jon looks like the candidate more than Rob does, so she also hates that, which I don't know why she'd be so pissed about that. It's like, cool, my son, the Tullys are going to be now the Lords of Winterfell and they're all going to be like brown, reddish hair, uh, boys up there versus you know the dark hairs of the Starks. I don't know. That, that might be a that might be a dude thing though. Like, all right, women in the comments, let us know if you give a shit whether or not your kid looks like you versus like your husband's or uh -huh. your, the baby's father or whatever. Let us know because yeah, dude, as men, dude, I want my kid to look just like me. I want to <laughs> see my DNA. I want to actually see it. I want to see it. Like I've dreamed about like, oh man, just go walking down the street one day and learning that I have some kid that I somehow. <laughs> like I impregnated a woman somewhere along the way, somehow you and did he's it? been he's <laughs> like, yeah somehow some way like I don't know all the details I'm not sure how it uh, works but it happened and now he's raised into successful adulthood it's like oh dude like that's my DNA that's gonna go on and seed the human Dad. race like, <laughs> he's just random uh, that's no that's not my fantasy I'm with me son but I it is a fantasy of like having your son or you know offspring look like you but uh, having them come across you on the street I don't know I. Yeah, fine. Other, like other side of the street. I'm seeing it in the distance. Okay, cool. You know, just like give him the Alfred nod from, yeah, exactly. from Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there's two other characters that for sure don't like him. I mean, do you think Lord Commander Mormont likes dislikes John? He kind of likes him because he wants to take him underneath his wing. But at the same point, if you want, if you like John, it's like, dude, just let him be a ranger. You know, don't let him let him spend time with his uncle, not be with you. Be like, you're gonna. Uh, Fill me, fill my wine cup and wipe my ass when I can't reach it because I'm a big, bald bear. Oh, yeah, dude. He's going to fill him up in all kinds of ways up there, man. You get lonely on the Night's Watch. I think he doesn't like him. Uh, I think, okay, there's good evidence that he respects Jon Snow because, yeah, like you say, he's kind of grooming him to be Lord Commander or whatever. But I don't know. I think that might just be out of desperation, too. Like, maybe there's just no one possibly there who he feels like could take up that role. So John's kind of like the second up from the bottom. I don't think that necessarily means that uh, Lord Commander Mormont likes him. Plus, by doing what he's doing to him and making him a steward and kind of 
giving him authority over people in this weird way and also making it kind of publicly seen throughout the night's watch that john gets to special privileges right i yeah. think that he knows that john's gonna take some abuse from that around just around the castles castle black and i think i think that abuse is intentional i think it easily could be seen as intentional not to mention too it's like dude john like you're the most capable dude here the most responsible guy you could be training all of my dudes like to perfection and that's one of the reasons why i'm keeping you here at the wall as opposed to sending you on ranger missions like you're an asset you could actually train rangers as opposed to go out and be one which you know he wants to do but whatever and then what do you do instead you just hang out with sam tarley all day you hang out with this <laughs> fat fucking guy who can't hold a sword to save his life it's like dude let maester aemon fondle sam while you actually <laughs> teach some of these delinquent boys how to stay in line like honestly that's what i would think yeah. would happen you know how many rapists there are at the wall and like murderers and i don't even know whatever else degenerates those dudes are probably lazy as hell john needs to whip these guys into shape and he does a little bit but I don't think it's nearly as much as he could. And yeah, sure, Alistair Thorne plays a part in that too. But I think Lord Commander Mormont has taken notice and does not like John for it. Yeah, I think uh, John needs to teach those, you know, grapists and murderers how to use a sword between their, or use a sword in their hands, not the ones between their legs that they're so uh, frequently using, I guess, down south. Alistair Thorne, of course, hates John, right? He. Uh, but, you know, he got sent up to the Night's Watch because he fought for uh, Rhaegar and the Targaryens in Robert's Rebellion. And I'm wondering, do you think, you know, Alistair, does he change his mind about Jon if he learns he's Lyanna's and Rhaegar's son? Or does he hate him even more because it's like, it's, it's, your, it's your father that caused me to be up here. It's your, <laughs> right. your daddy's yeah. lust for your mommy's pussy that brought me up here. It's a really difficult thing to say because... I don't know how, how invested he was. I understand he fought for the Targaryens or whatever, but do you really think that he would give a shit at this point? He just hates his life. He hate, I don't think you'd even make him hate him more. Even if he did have this resentment toward Rhaegar at this point, I don't think he gives two shits, dude. And I think another reason why maybe Lord Commander Mormont's kind of like had it with Jon a little bit too is when they go into Craster's Keep, Jon is the one like bucking the system the whole time. It's like, dude. Well, dude, Jon's being annoying as fuck. Yeah, Jon's like, we can't let him do this. It's like, John, <laughs> calm down. He's fine. We know what he's doing. We know what he's doing. But he's, these are his daughters. He said, we know. We know. That's yeah. enough. Go outside. Go outside. And, and anyone that, I think, uh, I think a couple of people have done videos on Craster. We might do a video. Let us know what you want us, what, what kind of video Craster video you want us to do. Because we might be doing like a in defense of Craster. Um, but, oh yeah, dude. He's my pick for king, man. <laughs> dude, the end of season eight, the, dude. Red woman, revive Craster. He's my king. Well, he is the true king beyond the wall. Uh, Mance is a little usurper. Imposter. Yeah, he's a usurper. He's an Craster imposter. Craster was the king. We all knew it. Everybody knew it. But yeah, Craster definitely, like, just leave him be. Like, you understand the asset you have with them. They do this all the time in war. We have situations where people are doing horrible things, but they're an asset. And if you took them out because you wanted to play, you know, do the most righteous thing possible, you would actually, they do this all the time in crime shows too, where, hey, we either can put the the drug dealer away or we can use him as an asset leave him on the streets and then go up higher up the chain to go up and get the the bigger threat the one that's pulling all the strings right and craster though we'd like to think he's like a bigger part up north he's uh he's a small guy he's the drug dealer on the streets okay bullshit why do you think that he they take his sons away because they know he's too powerful oh, to have a, a surviving oh, that's line true. never mind never mind yeah. scratch that <laughs> edit, on, this yes. <laughs> edit this out uh so well, one person that actually likes John, and it's actually like scare, like it's it's uncomfortable how much these two like each other, um, Arya and John, and you can feel it in you know the first book, first season Game of Thrones, but you know there was this plot uh, George R. R. Martin had that he wanted there to be a love triangle between Arya, John, and Tyrion early on, like the early drafts of Game of Thrones. And, and the way they talk to each other gives me the thinking, like, yeah, they like each other, but, like, knock, 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 uh, this is the FBI, George R. R. Martin, put your hands where we can see him. <laughs> yeah, I've listened, you know, I, I'm glad he scrapped it, but not because of the incest angle. I don't really give two shits about that. I don't, I don't care. We, this, there's so much incest in this show, man. We're already desensitized from day one. Like, if how much Cersei and Jaime go at it. If we see Arya and Jon eventually get together, the only weird part about that is that Arya was so young when we first made her, right? But if this happens, like, ten mm -hmm. years down the road... I don't give a shit. But you're right, dude. It was so obvious. We see it from the get-go. And this is why... We're, so this is the character that we think is the one exception to the Everybody Hates Jon Snow rule. This is the one singular... Yes. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, we regret to inform er, that this on, is the Early one on, because Egret later on, of course, like 
we, we we're just talking about early on, right? Because there's other characters you could argue. No, like no, about. I don't think Egret liked him either. She saw him as a way, basically curtail the Night's Watch to the Wildling forces. Oh, did she honeypot. did she stand with her man when they were fighting? I don't think so. I don't think so. She hates Jon Snow too. Uh, anyway, no, dude. From the get go, Arya is the one that likes Jon Snow. She's the only one, but it's impure. It's impure. This is why men and women cannot be platonic friends. Come on, it's never going to happen, at least not 100%. The most pure relationship on earth is between two straight men. And no one can change <laughs> my mind otherwise. <laughs> the most pure relationship. Not a man and a woman. Not two women. Not two men. No homosexuality involved. It's just two, two. straight men. Like Robert and Ned. And when you add a woman into the mix... Inevitably, it's going to yeah. turn sexual. It just will. I mean, look at what look at what Ned gives Arya. Like, hey, Arya, hey, Arya, I got you a present just from brother to sister. That's really a sibling platonic present. It's a representation of my penis. It's a needle. It's the smallest sword you've ever seen. But oh, it, isn't the thing you always wanted the littlest and smallest thing you can grasp around your hand? <laughs> it's really long, but it's super <laughs> skinny. Okay, so here is the one thousand million IQ move Ned should have done, right? So if Ned wanted to keep John safe and give him a good life, because if he wanted to keep him safe, he could have just sent him anywhere, right? Just send him up to the watch, the Night's Watch as a kid or send him to some other like low uh, born house, right? Just take the baby, send him there. They'll never know because what are they going to say? Like he has black, black hair and uh, I think brown eyes. He doesn't have purple eyes. So there's no reason why he should ever be uh, considered or even suspicion around the fact that he's a Targaryen, right? So this is what Ned should have done. He should have told Cat as soon as he could trust him. So at a certain point in their marriage, you'd think pretty early on. Yeah, I mean, unless she's an insufferable bitch, which it seems no, to be wait, that wait case. Wait a minute, <laughs> check. <laughs> and then you get Rob, or excuse me, I keep saying Robert. You get Robert to legitimize your boy and name Rob Stark your heir still. Say, hey, Robert's or Rob's my heir. John is just a Stark, but he has no claim to uh, claim to Winterfell at all. He's just going to be there. But then also push the fact that the Night's Watch is something good for him that he should be doing, but not say it's not going to be horrible. What he has to say is it's going to be pain and suffering, but I'm tasking you to do it, and you're the best person for it. Like, this is your destiny. You're going to, you know, you know, fight this battle up there for me as a Stark, right? That's way better. Or just let him sit down there, because what's the threat? Again, yeah. I, I just I don't see no, the no, threat no. by yeah. Robert. No, there, there, there's there's no threat. In case you haven't noticed, yeah, the thousand IQ is very sarcastic. This is like the easiest, most simple thing, and I don't understand why he wouldn't do it. You have to be an idiot not to take this path. Like, unless we're missing something here, let us know in the comments if there's some reason why Robert might refuse to legitimize Jon Snow. Because if if that's the only really obstacle I could see here, I, or I guess also if for some reason Ned really is just that dumb, and he. Is never tells John about the reality of the Night's Watch throughout his entire life just because, I, I don't know, he forgot or he really wants one of his kids to go up there just because it's great for the representation of the house. But otherwise, yeah, there's no reason not to. Catelyn would love John, and Jude, John's already such a nice guy. Can you imagine what he'd be like if he actually grew up in a strong, like, two-parent household? I guess it yeah. was a strong parent. It was a strong two-parent <laughs> household, but, you know, with one of your parents not absolutely hating your guts the entire time. Right. I don't know. I think it could only turn out better. Like hey, seriously, in the comments, let us know if there's anything wrong with that plan, because <laughs> I just don't see why not. It's just because Ned's stupid, I guess. That's just the the thing we've come to. And after seeing how he interacts with people down in King's Landing, I guess that's just uh, the Stark way to be stupid about things. I mean, he is he is a, not an oath breaker, and it would technically, I guess, be breaking your. See, this is another thing, though, man. It's like we don't know what the reality of the the interaction was between Lyanna and Ned Stark. You know, down in whatever, mm. Rhaegar's little, like, fun factory where he was keeping her. So I don't know. I, I don't know if it was really as dramatic as it was in the show. Like, please swear on your life. It's a sacred oath that you will never reveal it. But also there's going to be a record of this at the Citadel that we got married and conceived a child. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's kind of it's, it's just so weird to me that when, you know, this is similar to, like, with Rob Stark where he's like, I mean, they're married to Lisa or Jane Westerling, either one. He decides, hey, I'm going to break my original oath I have, which, you know, in this case was marrying the phrase. But with Ned is like, hey, I'm going to be faithful to Catelyn. And then he comes back with a bastard kid. You know, you're like, okay, you broke that oath, at least in the eyes of her. Why wouldn't you just like let her in on the secret? Like, hey, I didn't actually break this against you, right? Like, hey, 
totally right. cool here. Yeah, yeah, we're totally cool. Most people don't care about bastard, you know, kings from lords as long as they're, you know, they're chill dudes. Like Robert had how many people in throughout the He's round? great. He he lights up the room, man. He's the life of the party. Everybody likes Robert. So, <laughs> oh, yo, yo, one more thing here. One more thing. Do you think it's possible that Jon Snow is actually the son of Ned and Ashara Dane? Like, is that, <sighs> I, is that I, actually a possibility, though? I, I see people saying online that they actually want that to be, that he's actually just Ned's kid. Because it's like the subversion of expectation. It's like, it's not even like John or other, uh, like Rob's death at the Red Wedding. It's not subverting expectations at all. Like if you look at it, it's a twist that was coming of events that was clearly set up. And there's a logical conclusion to it. It's not subverting expectations, I don't think. And I I, I hate when people just think that, um, that John being Ned's kid would be a subversion of expectations at this point now in fandom. So now we're going to... Like, George is going to lean that way instead of just being Rhaegar's. Well, I guess because uh, like, come on, no, I want him to be. There's no reason, and maybe we'll do another video on that too. Is like I don't know, John has well, to. Be. I I never thought about it for some reason until this moment. But now that I think about it, like there could be a good justification for why he's still keeping it a secret. Then one, it would make sense. And yeah, let's do a video on this, but just real quick, I'll sum up our video that we're going to do. Uh, <laughs> at least it would make sense with Catelyn why he never tells Catelyn because if he were to make any excuse, it would just be an actual lie, right? Yeah. So that would be bad. But if, let's just say, if Ashara Dane uh, killed Lyanna Stark or something like that, right? Like, killed Lyanna Stark and she was actually kidnapped or something, right? Like, okay, let me rephrase this. Rhaegar actually kidnapped Lyanna Stark. It wasn't a yeah. loving relationship. Maybe it was, and then it went south or something. So right. they're at, they're at you know, Rhaegar's chocolate factory down there. and Yeah, Tower Joy. Yep. Yeah, the, to the tower. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> for some reason, Ashara Dane... Maybe she was just really wrapped up in the war or something with Ned. I don't know exactly the motivation, but if she ends up killing Lyanna Stark and that kind of sets her whole life into disarray because she knows now Ned will hate her and her brother's dead and she commits suicide out of that depression, maybe Ned would keep that a secret because if he were to let it out that this kid is the son of the person that killed uh, Lyanna Stark, Robert's like whatever, that would put him in just as much danger potentially, right? Yeah, but but like why would he... Because it, it'd be his kid in, in uh, Ashara Dane's you're saying still, right? Yeah, right. But okay, if, if Ashara Dane killed Lyanna, I know I'm like, this is like a fanfic now or whatever, but I know, if but Ashara like, Dane <sighs> killed Lyanna or something like that, wouldn't that be... No, but like the thing is like Ned should have just left, it, left the kid at Starfalls. Like, hey, listen, you know, me and you know, Ashara Dane over here... Had you know, we made we bumped our uglies pretty hard the other night, and this is the result. Can someone take care of this? Because I already have a kid, or that's probably on the way. <laughs> and my wife in, is a yeah. bitch, so I can't yeah. bring this kid home. <laughs> I hardly know her. You know, like she was supposed to be marrying my brother, and now <laughs> yeah, I come home, and dude, this is not going to end out well for this kid. I can already see it. So, can someone <laughs> else keep him here? Um, no, yeah, that would require Ned to have an ounce of wisdom, which he does not. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this and smash that like button. Or not. We don't care. <laughs>